All right, welcome back to the back and core rehab. This is part two. Now, part one, we did strength essentials. Part two is working on control and stability, and I've got three exercises that I want to work on, plus some little modifications. So, first one on control is your bird dog. Now, with the McGill bird dog, you're going to try and do this after you're done, or after you can complete a leg slide and an arm raise, meaning if you're working on arm raises, you're working on leg slides in the sort of early part of core rehab trying to get that activation control you can move to a bird dog. Now with the bird dog, and I've done a few videos on this, but today we're going to work on the stability and control part. So we're going to vary it a little bit. Now with your bird dog, again, you've got to make sure this lower back is not rounded, you're not hyperextended, you're sitting in neutral. When you go through your arm and your leg raise, okay, you've got to make sure that you're not sort of losing your control. The whole idea is to try and keep stable through your core while you're moving your arm and your legs so you're gaining core stability, core control. So meaning, make sure when you do this, you're not skewing off one side like that. So you've got to stay really strong with your arm and your leg. Now with your arm and your leg in this exercise to advance it a little bit, we're going to try and get you drawing squares or circles moving your arm and leg but still trying to keep yourself stable so with this one you're going to try and make sure you go into a strong bird dog here pulling down strong hand strong through here pushed up and then move that heel away now from there what you're trying to do is randomly move your arm and your leg but the whole time this is you're trying to stop it moving here, okay? So you're trying to almost do two things at once. You're trying to get the movement of your arm and leg going, but working out how to stop those arm and leg movements moving your spine, moving that midsection, okay? So just to recap on that one, get your neutral spine, get strong through your hands, make sure you can actually do your bird dog and hold it there because the whole time you're doing this sort of thing, you got to hold it stable for about sort of 10 seconds. And again, one side then the other. So that's a nice little way of trying to go from a bird dog, which you must be able to do properly, and then trying to add some that control and stability. The second thing I want you to work on is a rotation. Now, we do sort of Pilates type, fallout type exercises. So when you're down in this position here, and you're working on trying to move a limb when you're trying to be controlled here and you're moving one knee falling out of the side if you're good at that and you could do a decent fall out moving one hip at a time without the pelvis rolling around like this then what you can try and do is get up into tabletop now again you have to have enough control and strength to maintain tabletop without your tummy like doming out or anything like that. So you can only do this one if you've done the basics of getting that you know, core stability, neutral spine position. Now once you've got that, then you've got to try and say, can I then keep stable as I rotate? So as I move my pelvis left and right, meaning if I go to the left, I've got to work hard on this side over here, which starts cranking into some obliques, but keeping my pelvis very stable. So you're gonna to roll to one side and try not lose your activation through your core there, as well as not trying to let that tummy dome out. So you're not trying to hold your breath or pull it back and all that. You're trying to actually see if you can do it just with that low level work. So it has to be quite slow, this movement. And then when you get to this side there, like you start getting some cranking, some strengthening through the side. So it's like you're getting a little bit of control and stability plus you're entering into a little bit of side strength through that range. It's a really nice one to do. I find that's an awesome one to get control stability, if you like, through your core. So add that one in. Now your last one is working on a little bit of hip extension, but for the control part, you're actually working on can I stop my spine going into extension. Now remember the whole idea of these sort of three is can you maintain a strong neutral spine so you, when you do squats and deadlifts you're bearing load well, you're keeping things stable. So in four point, this position here, again you've got to go not extension, 
not full flexion, you're trying to say, where's my neutral spine here? Once you've got that, you've got your core activated, you're using a bit of pelvic floor, you're gonna go into a four point position into hip extension. Now I might have to look in the mirror to see where I'm going here, but but this movement here, you're gonna go hip extension as in heel to the ceiling. Now, watch me, this is what you're not allowed to do. When you push high, you're not allowed to extend your back, okay? So when people do hip extensions for glutes, don't extend your back. Otherwise, you're just doing back extension, okay? You're not isolating the glute. Now the whole thing with this one, when there's no load, we're not really doing glute putting, but a glute activation. But what we're trying to do is get your brain programmed to maintain neutral. So can I stabilize one area while I move another? As in stabilize the spine while I move the hip. Now that's gonna give you a lot better force sort of transition and power transition through the system when you're in that position. So it's teaching you to sort of not do this movement. It's teaching you, can I maintain stability here? And then push that heel to the ceiling, which really uses your buttock and your hamstring. But you can only go so far as that you're gonna feel that sort of neutral spine, you're gonna lose it. So from here, you're gonna push up. And when I sort of feel like I can't control anymore and I feel like my back's wanting to try and extend, then I just bring it back down again. So four point, but it's actually sort of three point because there are three points on the ground, one's moving constantly. So it's sort of 10 or 12 reps trying to do this and you'll really feel that through your glute. And obviously one way of advancing that is put a band on your heel, tight to your hand. So a band is gonna be the easiest way that you're gonna advance that little four point hip extension. So one hand, one leg, same position like this, okay, but when you're extending now, you've got some resistance there. Now you can put obviously a mini loop band around your knees if you like. I like the long band because it gives you a bit of graduated load. So it's not so tight and hard. Remember, you're trying to control stability here. If you've got a really hard band around your knees, you might start doing this sort of thing. So try and keep that neutral spine, pushing up on the ceiling as much as you can without losing control. So there's your sort of three with some little modifications in there. Now that's working on control and stability, okay? Meaning trying to control and stabilize the pelvis while you're moving arms and legs. And that's one of the fundamentals for your core strength and stability, all right? So we've gone through strength essentials. There's your control and stability. Next time, we're gonna go through some posterior chain strengthening to help you with your lifting. See you then.